I'm excited to bring to you today a short uh, webinar that is a joint venture between Lean Frontiers and ASQ's Lean Enterprise Division. The subject matter of today's webinar is on Kata, TWI, and Hoshin, and will be facilitated by Chris Hayes. Chris Hayes is the CEO of Impact Performance and also serves as an active fellow of ASQ and currently chair for the Lean Enterprise Division. Chris specializes in working with organizations across the globe providing both operational excellence services and e-learning and blended training in the air arenas of Lean. Uh, if there's time, we will leave um, a bit of time for Q&A at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions as we're going along, please um, ask them. There's On your taskbar, there's a questions tab where you can click the plus sign and submit your question there. Uh, another note is that this webinar will be recorded if you want to refer back to it later. So for now, I will turn things over to Chris. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jacqueline. Um, thanks for allowing me to be here today. I'm really excited to share a bit about some of the ways I've been incorporating improvement concepts and so far making a positive improvement in the way that um, it's affecting the sustainability of lean with the folks that I'm working with. With that, let's get started talking about just that, sustainability of lean. While there are really no good statistics I could find out there to quote, I think most of us that are on the call today can um, that have been working with lean for any extended period of time can probably admit to the fact that there are a large portion of companies maybe some of the ones we work for that have implemented lean and didn't or aren't currently getting the results that they were originally looking for you know if you you go out there and you come through Google or Amazon or, or one of those different areas you're likely to find a large number of websites and books um, from people just like me that are going to offer their explanation for why that is along with their solutions for it. You know, here in this presentation, I'm going to offer you my explanation and my solutions so far. Uh, take from it what you will and adapt and improve it. You know, as Mike Rother once said to me, um, when I referred to him as one of the lean gurus, he said something to the effect of, you know, I really don't like that term guru. If you consider yourself a guru, then you, you really you stop learning and continuously improving. People should take what I've researched, you know, this is his words, learned and, and written about and practice it, experiment with it, and then make it your own. You know, so, you know, that's obviously a paraphrase a little bit from what he, he told me, but you get the idea, you get the gist of what he was saying there. And, and with that, what I want to do is, you know, talk about, you know, what I've done, what I've learned, and um, how I've used it, and I want you to take it, experiment with it, and then make it your own as well. All right, so, whoops, I am. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties here. There we go. I think I have the other screen on. Okay. Anyone that's been around me for the last decade or so uh, will probably tell you that I have a passion around a few specific improve improvement concepts in particular. It's not that I don't like the others, because I do. It's just that these, these few have really grabbed my heart over the years because they speak directly to my own personal values and tenets. Now, these, these specific concepts include you know, the ones that are on the title of the presentation, Hoshin Conry, TWI, and then my newer favorite, Kata. Uh, one of my other favorites is Standard Work for Leaders. We're not going to have time to talk about that, but um, I want you to know that it also integrates wonderfully with all these other three that we are going to talk about. And at one time or another, I've taught workshops, presented at conferences, wrote articles, all sorts of different things on all of these different, um, all of these four, um, as well as others. And I've touted each one as, as pretty much the greatest thing since sliced bread. The truth is, I'm happy to say that I think I was right on all of those occasions. They're all really pretty amazing. When it comes to my own values and, and personal perspectives, whether in my personal or professional life, 
I hold a very high regard for developing the skill and discipline of setting goals and executing to the achievement of those goals. That's really kind of important to me. I learned it early on. Potion Connery really couldn't be a better fit for that in my opinion. Um, I when I first learned about it, it it just really grabbed me and I have used it in both again my professional and my personal life for many many years. In Hoshan Conry there, there are very various elements and benefits that can be achieved. Strategy planning and deployment, goal achievement, organizational alignment, um, and, and a method for executing that plan. So all of these things are really what attracted me to Hoshan Conry. When it comes to training and teaching, I've long been an advocate of experiential learning as well. It's how I've always learned best, and it is really by far the, the way that most of those that, are, that have learned from me really prefer to learn. The fact that all of TWI's training programs are centered on the learn by doing approach made me really fall in love with it as well. So as with Hoshin Conry, TWI has various elements and benefits that are, are, are tied with it that you can see on the screen. TWI is really big on coaching and teaching. It teaches behavioral patterns or routines and it it can also help us tremendously in achieving our goals. It has improvement practice routines in its uh, uh, job method program, and we'll talk about the programs themselves a little bit more in detail here in a few minutes. Um, and it also teaches us to experiment with changing processes. So that's another one of my favorites. And then um, another couple of tenants that I hold pretty close to my vest are the ability to be flexible in, in most matters in everything that I do. And I really like to have a lot of fun with just trying different things. I'm, I'm not one of those people that's afraid of change. Give me something new to do and I'm in, I'm in my happy place. So when I first picked up uh, Mike Rother's book, it wasn't the Toyota Kata part of the title that got me hooked. And, and I think I remember uh, Mike saying at some point, you know, he really didn't want to put the Toyota part in there. It's kind of one of those things that does most uh, tend to grab people's attention. That wasn't it for me. Uh, what really grabbed my attention was the subtitle, Managing People for Improvement, Adaptiveness, and Superior Results. So, you know, the improvement part, I've been doing that for years, the adaptiveness, that flexibility that I, that I absolutely love. And then, of course, you know, as I mentioned with um, Hoshin Conry, the superior results, really reaching the goals that I've planned out. So helping develop people uh, so that that every person every day works on improving every process was pretty much, much right up my alley. And then to learn that, much like TWI, it uses, it, um, Kata uses a learn by doing approach, wow, um, I knew there was something special inside of this book. So um, I read it and I've implemented a lot of it. Um, the improvement practice routines are heavily tied to Kata. It's, it's based on uh, oops, scientific uh, thinking and behavioral patterns just like TWI. Kata is very effective in helping to achieve goals through um, experimental routines. Experimenting is really um, a key here and um, creates that alignment between those various levels of the organization. So, so the goal creating alignment, all of these different things. And, and as you can see, all three of these uh, different concepts, improvement concepts, or whatever we want to call them, because I hear people call them different things. Some people call them tools, some people call them management elements, whatever you want to call them. You can see very easily the synergies between them. Now, we all know that implementing tools alone within Lean doesn't work, or at least it doesn't work in the long run. Using tools can sub-optimize processes within a full system using tools to improve in one area, what we're talking about there, without considering what the improvement might affect in another process, oftentimes hinders the system as a whole. That's, that's what we're talking about with sub-optimization. Well, some might argue that Hoshin, Conry, TWI, and Kata are tools in the toolbox. You know, I, and you know, used separately, they very well may cause sub-optimization. Whether they're tools or not, like I said, that's a debate for somebody else. I'll, I'll, I'll let them take it. What I am certain of is that using each alone does have its drawbacks. Neither, none of them are perfect in and of themselves, or at least in my experiment, um, ex, ex, experience um, in the past. 
So thinking about this one day, I began to experiment with what would happen if I used Host and Connery to identify the goals that would define the strategies that would in turn help the value stream owners commit to identifying with some challenges that they could feed into their improvement kata. And again, I'm going to talk a few minutes and, and explain some of these terms and where they're coming from. Um, but I just started playing. Remember, I, I like to experiment. So I started playing with that. And then I started playing with incorporating um, what's called the JI program, the job instruction program inside of TWI, into teaching the improvement and coaching kata. So we, we started creating those. I even used Hoshin Connery to help prioritize the job methods initiatives under uh, TWI um, into all of that as well. But before I get too far into finishing that story and, and how all of that worked, let me spend just a few minutes orienting anybody on the call that might not be familiar with these three management system elements. That's what I call them. I don't call them tools. I think they're much more than that. Um, as we run through each, I'm going to try and point out ways that the three are synergistic to each other as well. And hopefully by the end of this, you will all be able to see those synergies and see where maybe you can combine them. And maybe what I've done is, you know, just a starting point for some of you to integrate them together um, into, into your systems. So uh, let's, let's talk about Hoshin Conry first. Um, we only have a very short time today. I was trying to figure out as I was doing this presentation, because this one's, this one's a, a new one for me, putting them all together and trying to explain it. I was trying to figure out how am I going to get all this in in, in 60 minutes um, when I feel like I could do a whole week on this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of the speed dating version of Hoshin Conry and, and as well as TWI and, and Kata. Um, I think the intent of um, is, 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 will still be there um, and, and you'll get what you need out of it. So Hoshin translate to, translates loosely uh, to direction needle, or at least that's what I've, I've been using all of these years. You can think of it as a type of compass meant to lead the way to achieving results. Again, that's kind of my, my words to it. I'm sure if you um, speak Japanese or um, Google it, you'll probably find some others, but I think they all kind of tend to the same thing. Conry translates loosely to control logic, which is the controlled method we use in following that compass to those results. Hoshin Conry together, you know, in a, in a nutshell, I think is just the method for controlling the directions that our companies move in, how we're how are we going to control what it is that we are doing? In many ways, an organization is kind of like a piece of machinery. In order for the machine to run correctly, all of those cogs on the gears, they really need to be in sync. If they're not, that machine is going to groan and growl and make all sorts of pretty scary noises. And after a while, if the cogs still aren't in, in sync, that machine is going to break down. The same thing can happen in your organizations. Think of your own organization. Um, there are tons of processes that need to work inside of that organization in concert with each other. Why? Well, because if they are all linked in some sort of form or fashion, um, not if, they are all <laughs> linked in some sort of form or fashion. If you think about those processes inside, they connect somehow. If we have one process that's focusing on a different result or outcome than maybe another process, then bad things will probably happen within that system of linked processes. Each process might be, we're going to use this word again, sub-optimizing at the expense of that entire organization's objectives. So we might get some little wins, probably all of you can relate, but we're really not um, connecting, directly connecting to the goals of the organization as a whole. Without providing clear direction, employees really, they're kind of left to their own devices to try and guess what things they need to do in order to not only support, but actively engage in achieving organizational goals. That's where Hoshin Connery really takes center stage, in my opinion, because we're really setting that that direction with our compass and then we're allowing people the autonomy to take themselves and their work in, in the direction that they see they need to go in. And you don't have to babysit. 
Um, uh, Hoshin Kanri is sometimes called Hoshin planning. Um, it links, in a nutshell, what we're looking at here um, with this Venn diagram is the linkages between top level objectives, that senior management, that's kind of their role, they're responsible to set with the, with the uh, strategies and the resource planning that mid-management plans or the objectives that the mid-management plans and implements. So senior management's up here, they're doing visions or, or goals um, and strategies. How are we going to meet those? Then we have our mid-management. They're responsible to kind of look at the objectives and make sure we have the resources. And then the tactical teams, we connect to them through their actions, their tactical actions, and, and they work on scheduling. So um, all of that in turn supports the vision and the objectives of, and, and the strategies of the organization again. So it's kind of that, that uh, um, synergy at those various levels. So um, let's take a look for a second here um, at what that looks like in, in, in an organization. So there we go. Um, sorry, the, I, I see now that the screen looks, uh, it's hard to see the, the graphics a little bit. I hope it's not as bad on your end. Um, but this is what on the screen is a visual map of how that might look in your organization. Um, obviously, your organizations look a little bit different, but you should see something here that I hope is very familiar to all of you, and that's that, that this thing called the PDCA cycle. So in each one of those little circles, the words that are hard to read are plan, do, check, act, and, and most of us are probably familiar with those I hope we what we do is we begin at the top level of the organization and, and in this case of the visual that I have on the screen uh, this is a corporate entity so we have um, corporate objectives and initiatives up there and then we link each level objective to the next one down in the in this value stream through the organization and across all of the functional areas of the organization so our corporate objectives, I wish I could, I could point, and I was in front of you, you could see, I don't know if you can see my uh, cursor or not moving, but we have a down arrow that's pointing to the site objectives and initiatives. And so we're flowing objectives down to the next level. The site objectives and initiatives flow down to the functional objectives and initiatives and so forth and so on until we get down to the specific tasks or what we call those tactical activities that we need to do in order to support those objectives going forward. So we have the flow down of information. We take the, um, if we're down at the specific tasks, we take those specific tasks, we put those through that plan, do, check, act cycle, and that feeds back up into helping achieve the next level ups in the organization's objectives. There's again feed in to the next level functional objectives, and the functional objectives again lead into the, the site objectives, and, and then again corporate objectives. So it's it's a cycle in and of itself. We're flowing down objectives, and we are feeding back commitment and an achievement in smaller bites of each of those objectives. We all kind of play our own role. So um, at each, uh, each level, as they um, meet their objectives, the what, I call that the what, they, what happens is they throw those objectives down to that next level in what we call catch ball. The next level catches the objective and, and if you can picture this in your head it's just like a game of catch you might have played with your your dad or your brothers and sisters out in the yard when you were younger so you, the lower level catches those objectives they work with their teams they with that engagement of those teams so everybody's making decisions they determine what they're going to do to help accomplish those higher level goals they throw that commitment back up to the upstream level and they um, continue in this way until an agreement has been reached on what portion of meeting those goals they're going to play. What is their commitment? 
Now, once that happens, they're going to begin to define how they will accomplish their goals. Now, something that's key here in Hoshe and Connery is that instead of that old management by objectives where the managers decide what you're going to do, what we're doing is we're engaging the whole workforce and the workforce themselves and the teams that are actually have to do the work, they're going to decide how they're going to meet those goals. So again, you've got a, you've got a lot more commitment there, you've got a lot more buy-in, and we all know that that, you know what if they're part of the decision they're probably going to be um, much more committed to making sure that happens so uh, they figure out how they're going to accomplish those goals uh, uh, um, and then um, they're going to measure whether the, that they've met those and so we have um, all of these PDCA cycles that are going on in the organization until you know we we reach our top level goals and so we have in the yellow here we've got the flow down and we have um, the from the from the lower level up we have the how it's going to be done and then in between these cycles we have these reviews these periodic reviews uh, to monitor the progress and implement the countermeasures as required and hopefully being that we're all lean these are all very visual so while there's a lot more to implementing Hoshe and Conry that we could um, discuss here this I'm hoping this gives everybody a, a basic understanding of what happens within Hosh and Connery and how it helps the organization achieve goals through this alignment of the, the whole workforce. Okay, so what is TWI? No other supervisor training um, program is as well-rounded as through um, this thoroughly proven um, program called TWI, Training Within Industry. Um, its methods are so well structured that they haven't changed in over seven decades. Um, I think there's probably a few people out there that have changed a couple of little things, but for the most part, this, this Training Within Industry, uh, TWI has really stayed intact throughout the years. There are thousands of companies that have used TWI um, that could be listed on this, this screen. Um, TWI, it has been re-emerging um, for a really long time and it you know it's doing so because it really has stood the test of time we see we see standardization uh, most of us as a foundation to lean in many versions of of the house of lean TWI supports standardization efforts and and they do that by teaching supervisors how to standardize um, the things that they do whether it's teaching or leading or um, improving and why it's important because it's an all-encompassing program, TWI really inspires some profound change and lasting cultural change. Um, I, I, I think that it's probably one of uh, the better ways to, that I've seen to get everybody involved. Um, it, it really does empower uh, the supervisor and, and, and it helps them sustain um, that culture of continuous improvement that, that we're all after. So we can get everybody um, on board it really does some wonderful things. Now, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on, on all of these um, because we don't have a whole lot of time, but you know what? Almost two million certificates of completion were issued um, between 1941 and 1945 when this program was going on. It, it, it's old. Um, and you can see the results. Um, they were pretty profound. 86% increased production by at least 25%. Well, how many were 50%? I don't know. Maybe there were some uh, some really big numbers. These numbers don't tell us everything. But there were some really profound changes. I don't know if this uh, this sampling, what, the 600 companies, is um, uh, representative of the four, you know the the total number of companies. Uh, but if it is, like I said that's that's pretty good um, stuff. Pretty remarkable. Um, when it comes to the program itself, and again, I'm having, I, mean, I struggle when I put this together because there's so much I could, I could tell you about the TWI program. It, it just makes me all excited just, just going over the slides again. Um, it was built on the premise that every supervisor has five needs. So I guess we kind of have to start with the fundamentals. Um, this five needs model uh, that was created um, was it was created back in World War II, and it really describes the five essential needs that have to be satisfied before any supervisor can fulfill his or her responsibility successfully. Uh, the, T, the TWI developers 
back then, um, something to note is that they defined a supervisor to include anyone who supervises or guides the works of others. So it doesn't matter whether somebody has a title or not, but if you're guiding the work of others or you are actually supervising it, um, these tend to be the needs that um, must be satisfied. So the first two needs are types of knowledge. The last three are types of needs are skills. So knowledge and skills, two different categories. Uh, knowledge is something that you're going to acquire by reading a book or attending a class or, you know, like sitting in this uh, webinar, uh, those kind of things. You're, the skill, though, is really something that you can only learn through practice and repetition. And you're going to see this kind of repeated when we start talking about kata, this, this idea that you actually have to practice and repeat your work in order to get it. Um, so, for instance, you can gain knowledge of swimming through reading a book. They could tell you how to do the strokes, but until you get in the water, you probably are not going to know how to swim. So the four programs with T TWI were structured to address each of these. And you can see over on the left-hand side of the, the screen where they fall. Uh, the, you'll oftentimes hear with TWI all about the J programs, and the J programs are the ones that work on skills, um, um, job instruction training, job method training, job relationships training. Um, the program development, that's all about the knowledge. How are we going to develop this program to um, ensure that we have uh, everything in place that, that, that needs to be there. So the responsibilities, the knowledge of the work itself, policies, those kind of things. So that's where the, the premise of TWI comes from is satisfying these five needs and each of those programs within it um, address each individual one. So job instruction training is all about the skills of instructing somebody on how to do something. Job methods training is all about how are we going to improve our processes. And then job relations training, um, that's all about leading people. How do we have those relationships? Um, I think it's pretty well known that people leave their jobs oftentimes because of their supervisors. I think I can't remember the, the survey that came up with that, um, but I think we can all agree to that. And, and uh, the job relations program does a really good job of, of helping with that. So using a four-step method uh, that was developed a long, long time ago during the development of this TWI program, they... Um, developed a um, similar approach for each one of, and we're going to talk about the J programs here, of, of these J programs. So they have, you can see job instruction has four steps, uh, prepare the work of present the operation, try out the performance and follow up, uh, job methods has four steps, and the job relations has four steps. Again, we're looking for that standardization. How are we going to very methodically do these certain things? By giving each of those programs a common four-step pattern, or, or we call them behavioral routines in, in Kata, um, what that did was allowed for those common traits between each program and made it easy for the supervisors to practice each method really quickly. So those, those behavioral patterns, those repetitions, the, uh, those, those things that we need to do. Um, I don't have a screenshot of it, but there are these pocket-sized cards that were developed for each of these J program courses. And surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly because the program is so rough, robust, the cards developed by TWI are almost identical to both the cards used in um, the 2003 um, or in 2003 at Toyota when they were, um, at that time when they were implementing this, as well as most of the companies that I go into or I talk to that are using TWI, they still use the same cards. So, you know, I guess it's one of those things of why miss with success. Now notice that the PDCA cycles that are evident within each of the steps. Um, we're talking about a, a scientific method. I uh, remember from our discussion on Hoshin Connery, uh, we talked about that same thing, that scientific method, the PDCA cycles. Well, take note because you're going to see them again as we talk about kata. All three use a scientific approach, with I th which I think is very important. And until I really started looking at each one, it was, it was kind of an aha for me. And uh, that kind of started 
the uh, me down the path of wow I think these these three as well as the standard word for leaders I think that um, I think they're very synergistic synergistic with each other so all of the programs have a few other things in common as well um, on top of that four-step method so in uh, the J programs they're all taught using the terminology of those using it and not academic language again that's to me is really important and, and for those of you that might work in um, um, organizations whether you consult or you're training within your companies or whatever you probably have realized over time that that's an important thing to do if we're talking in academic language to folks that are um, maybe on a shop floor or um, maybe have a lower level of education and haven't spent a lot of time in the academic world you're not going to connect so I think that that's really important the participants um, are also uh, in each of the programs they're required to use the method um, that they're being taught on a real problem so they learn through practical application and they what they're getting in effect is immediate benefits so you'll notice when we get to kata that the learn by doing approach is evident there as well and again that makes some synergy there and, and of course that that goes right to my tenants so and uh, principles so I, I loved that part of it now when it comes to structure, um, the structure, the teaching structure for each of these programs, it's pretty rigid for, the, for, um, for all of them. Um, I think there's probably a few people that have tried to, to change it up a little bit. I think I remember, oh, there's a, there's a TWI workbook that I bought years ago, and I think I remember, uh, vaguely, don't quote me, but I think I remember them doing some experiments on how, you know, how could we do this in less time, or can we do it in two days, or something like that, and, and everybody that I've ever talked to uh, always comes back to the original requirement for the structure. Um, the structure teaches us that you're going you're gonna to teach this in five two-hour sessions. Those sessions are going to be back-to-back, -back, and there's going to be a total of 10 hours each. So you're going to do five days in a row, two hours each, um, and, and that works out really well. Class sizes are recommended to be pretty small. Um, again, you know, some people have experimented otherwise, but, um, and, and I'm one of them, it doesn't work out well. What, given that each of the classes has to or requires that you do a, a um, some some actual practical work on a real live problem. If you had more than ten, there's no way that you'd be able to get to everybody and give them the time that they need. So I found, and others have found, that um, you really need to to keep with that under ten. So that's TWI in a nutshell. Um, although there's so, so, so much more underneath that hood of this powerful vehicle, <laughs> I could go on for a long time. Like Hoshin Conry, this is, this is a whole webinar in and of itself um, with lots more detail than I've been able to give you. My goal was just to make sure that um, we all see that TWI helps us bridge that gap we often have in providing our supervisors with the skills they need. Um, in order so that they can help us execute those strategic goals and um, through the leadership and the improvement and the training and, and things that TWI teaches. So uh, making that connection is, is, is what's important and I, I just wanted to give you a brief overview. So with that, let's move on to um, Kata. So I have to start off by saying that, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, trying to give a proper introduction to any of these three was really difficult in the time that we had for the webinar. I, 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 I feel especially cheap in all that I can give you on Kata today. So um, please, if I'm not able to convey how awesome any of these are, do go take the time to, to do a little research. Um, Mike Rother has an amazing website out there where he shares anything and everything he knows about Kata. If you Google Toyota Kata website, his site's going to be the first one that comes up after any of the, the paid advertisements that are out there. Um, so, so go find more information. Again, my hope is just to give you a kind of a broad um, overview so that you can see how the synergies relate and um, how I've been able to put them together. So with that, with that, let's see if I can do a halfway decent job of describing what Mike has given us in the idea of um, Kata. 
Now you already know from my previous comments that kata is meant to give us a way to apply a scientific method for pursuing challenging goals. And, and we do that by enabling teams to make autonomous decisions and move situationally. Now these words that I just said, I just read them um, because I, I would do a horrible job of um, trying to remember them, um, but they're taken pretty much directly from Mike's website. I think earlier I used the words flexibility and problem solving. So that's my version of it. But, but enabling teams to make autonomous decisions and move situationally is really important. How would that feel in your organization? Now traditional organizations work something like what you see on the slide. Um, they want to obtain some goal. Um, or some condition within their organization and that is different than where they're at today. It's different than their current state. So they make a plan and they try to, um, following it in an attempt to reach the goal or condition. We call that blind implementation mode because in reality everything from here to there it's uncertain. We really don't know what's going to happen. There are only three things we should ever know with certainty. Where we are now, where we want to be, and by what means we should maneuver that unclear territory between here and there. The rest is really supposed to be unclear because seeing into the future is really impossible. And internal and external environments, they're constantly changing. In our, in our markets, in our organizations, there's stuff that we can't predict. So um, it's supposed to be unclear. Anyone who's ever done any project uh, management work, um, I don't know if you can say this, but I've never seen a project plan work as expected. They, they just don't, and it's because so many things come up. And what we want to do is we want that we want that method for how are we going to get from here to there and maneuver all of those uncertainties. That's what we're looking for. So at Toyota, improvement and adaptation, these are systematic and a fundamental element of every task performed. It's, it's, just, it's not just an add-on or some special event when problems become urgent because they've been neglected for too long. Everyone at Toyota is taught behavior patterns that apply in almost every situation. So stemming from the basic forms of movements and martial arts, um, if any of you are martial artists, um, you know, these are handed down from master to student, from generation to generation. These patterns or routines are called kata. That's where it all comes from. So if there's one thing to look at in trying to understand and perhaps emulate Toyota's success, these behavior patterns are probably it. Copying Kanban, copying 5S, copying all of those tools, it didn't work for us. We've been trying it for a lot of years. This is probably what we want to look at, those behavior patterns. Cutter are different, um, I will add, from production techniques and principles, though. Kata pertain to the behavior of the people and are much, much more universally applied. Uh, they're repeated actions that you use to improve, adapt, evolve, no matter what that changing environment is. That's those routines. Any organization with the ability to face unpredictable situations, I think, um, especially if you can do it with confidence and effective action, you're going to be able to enjoy a competitive advantage without a doubt. The, there's there's um, two katas underneath. There's, there's many katas as well, but the, there's the improvement kata and the coaching kata. These two katas underneath um, uh, what we're calling Toyota kata, Mike describes in his book, they're the less visible parts of lean at Toyota. Uh, we haven't quite learned um, how to emulate those yet. We do a great job of emulating all those tools that we talked about, 5S and all of that stuff. We've tried it. Doesn't work very well. It's, it's the stuff underneath the surface, the stuff that we can't quite see as easily that we have a hard time emulating. And it's probably because maybe we're not meant to emulate. Maybe we're supposed to, you know, make our own thing. Uh, practicing the improvement kata 
it's really about embedding improvement, adaptiveness, and that innovation into daily work. Um, not just a group of people that are going to do it, but everybody, every day, every process. And when we teach lean solutions or those tools without teaching the kata routine, we really fail to develop that disposition for continuous improvement that is so evident in Toyota. That's, that's kind of what characterizes Toyota, is that, that culture. Now, I don't know how many of you have um, seen the Matrix movies. Um, I like to kind of uh, throw, throw this little analogy in there. But um, if you have seen them, you might remember the scene between um, uh, where Morpheus, who's played by, um, oh, who is it, Lawrence Fishburne. Fishburne. Um, he tells Neo, that's Keanu Reeves, um, about the Matrix. And he offers him the ability to see the truth. Um, um, he offers him a couple of pills. One's blue, one's red. The blue pill is going to allow him to remain in this blissful ignorance of the Matrix's illusion. And then the red pill, what that will do is it's going to allow him to live the truth of reality, uh, even though it may be a little bit more challenging than the, the fun life that he sees in the Matrix. Kinda, kinda, I think is kind of like that red pill. It offers us the ability to move from under that blissful world of occasional kaizens, um, where we work on what's visible and move on, uh, move into that world where daily improvement is, is becomes part of the DNA because we're working on the less visible but more powerful. So the question always comes up: Do you want the blue pill, or do you want the red pill? The red pill is not necessarily going to be as easy, but um, it definitely brings a lot more uh, um, uh, sustainability to our lean, lean um, improvements. So together, the improvement kata and the coaching kata develop people from within the uh, organization to meet challenges. We kind of talked about it, that in the definition. The methodologies create a culture of that adaptation or that flexibility to any circumstance. It means we can maneuver around anything. So let's talk through uh, the kata, the improvement kata first really quickly and then we'll um, talk quickly about the coaching kata. Because again, we, I know we don't have a lot of time. So the improvement kata, it's that behavioral model um, that we're referring to. Uh, this model on the screen, it's, uh, it's a four-step process as well. You'll see the similarities to TWI. Um, and the four steps are broken into two phases. You see down underneath them, you have a planning phase and you have an executing phase. This routine is a teachable model that anyone in the organization can use to apply a scientific method of thinking and acting. This is the critical thinking skills that we don't really teach our kids anymore. This is bringing it back. Um, it should look familiar. It's very much like that uh, four-step model in TWI, as I mentioned. Um, if you think about it, TWI is full of katas. They're all just routines that are very simple to follow and very simple to learn and practice. Step one is all about defining and ensuring um, understanding of an overall direction or, or some specific challenge. That's up in the top right there. Ideally, we, we're, we want to be able to set these using strategic plans of the organization. This is where Ocean Conrad can really integrate well. By using that catch ball to define the commitments made at the various levels of the organization, um, we give direction to the challenges within the improved Makata. From, so, combining Hoshin Kanri with Kata in order for us to align so that we're not just working on random improvements can help us achieve our goals. So, um, from there, we define our current condition, step two. Uh, we define the current condition. Um, and, and where we're going to identify how our process is operating right now. Sometimes we do that with process maps. Um, we can do that with all sorts of different ways. There's a whole kata underneath this, this step too. Um, the next step is setting a target condition for how we're going to want that process to operate um, in step three. And then in step four, what we're going to do is we're going to continuously expand on what we call a threshold of knowledge. 
You know, it's what we know right now. We're going to expand that through experimentation. Another one of my favorites, right? So these, these experiments, what's, what they're meant to do is move us toward our next target condition and ultimately closer to meeting our challenge. So we identify some challenge or some vision. We identify where we're at now. We set some sort of intermediate target condition. We only have so much knowledge in there and we're going to find some, some obstacles, but we're going to experiment our way towards meeting the next target condition. Now, as part of the practice of kata, the, um, what we call the learners, uh, they use what's called a storyboard as a tool to help them work through the kata process. And the storyboard, again, I don't have a whole lot of time to go through it, but the storyboard, um, the important parts here is it's managed by the learner and not, not what we call the coaches. So the, the people that are learning this and going through those, those experiments, they're the ones that run this board. And it's best suited really to be out where the work is being done um, so that it's, it's handy, it's not forgotten, it's not sitting in some, some uh, conference room somewhere. And it simply just guides the learner through the steps of the kata. You can see the, the, the steps here, challenge, target condition, challenge is step one, target condition, step two, current condition, um, and, and then we have these PDCA cycle records and, and obstacle um, parking lots that help us through that process. But um, it gives the coach and the learner a common place to discuss their progress at meeting those challenges. So the storyboard is, is really used for all those steps. And, and it makes sure that we don't skip anything. It makes sure that we're having those, those uh, mentoring um, opportunities, really helping us with Kind of um, look back at TWI where we're trying to teach people things and we are trying to coach them and let them learn through, through experimentation. I know I'm going really fast. I apologize. <laughs> uh, let's go on to the coaching kata. Uh, just a couple slides here. The coaching kata is as equally important as the um, improvement kata. Coaches, um, again, they interact with the learners at every step of the improvement kata and they do it using that storyboard. Uh, what they're doing is they're guiding the learner and helping them practice each of those steps in the correct way. Because this is, it's kind of like riding a bike, it's going to take a little while before you get the hang of it. Once you get the hang of it, it's, it becomes your habit. But until then, somebody needs to help hold the bike a little bit. Uh, during that fourth step, the coach uses what's called coaching cycles. Um, one coaching cycle equals five questions that the coach is going to ask the learner um, and the learner is going to answer those questions and those um, those are what are helping to set this pattern in both the coaches as well as the learner's mind. So through these daily coaching cycles, the coach uses the five question card um, that you see on the screen to give procedural guidance to the learner to help them succeed in achieving their target. Um, this is helping the learner initialize the improvement kind of pattern of thinking and acting. And, and it's also helping the coach practice and improve their coaching skills as well. So the learner uses what's called a PDCA rec um, cycle record, as I mentioned, to help answer the questions that are on the card. Um, each coaching cycle, uh, it should lead to some kind of a PDCA experiment by the learner. So for example, if um, let's say, uh, if, if the target condition is to implement a Kanban system between two processes by some certain date, let's say, um, then there's gonna be a coaching cycle every time the learner experience, experiments with something new. So the learner may have 10 experiments um, or steps to reach that target condition. They may only have three. We don't know what's going to happen. Remember that gray area in between here and there. Uh, the coach is simply guiding the learner through each of the steps um, and through each of the experimentation. So they're asking, making sure that the learner understands what is your target condition. What is the actual condition now? Now, um, you may be thinking, okay, well, that seems kind of repetitive. Why do I have to ask them every time? What if they do five cycles in a day? Well, um, remember, we're setting habits here. Um, once they get through step two, question two, what is the actual condition now? They're going to flip the card over, and they're going to reflect on that last step. The, question then, the questions then become, what did you plan as your last step? What did you expect from that last step? 
What actually happened? What did you learn from that last step? And the learner's answering these questions. They, they need to know those answers, and, and um, they'll be part of that PDCA cycle record. Uh, the, the card gets flipped back over, and then we start talking about what do we want to do next? What's your next step? What do you expect to happen? How quickly can we come and see what you've learned from taking that step? And then that cycle repeats itself. So you can see that it's a very simple process. The improvement kata only has four steps. The coaching kata walks them through, going through those steps, and they continue on and on until each target condition is reached. And as each target condition is reached, the challenges that are set that help the organization reach their goals are also set. Okay, what do I have here? I think I'm uh, 10 more minutes. Um, I, this is the last, really the last slide. Um, I just want to kind of come back to uh, that, the story that I was, that I was telling. Um, again, just went through some very brief, very high level definitions of what Potion Connery, TWI, and Kata are. Uh, lots more information. You're welcome to reach out to me as well. But um, I think that'll that'll help you at least see what we did um, in my experimentation. So, <coughs> excuse me. As I mentioned earlier, one of the first things we did was to use Hoshin Conry to gain commitment of all at all levels of the organization, um, so that they could help meet the organizational goals at the higher levels. So we, we, I met with management, we went through, we did our mission, our, mission, our vision, uh, looked at some values to make sure they were in alignment. And once we had the vision and the goals that were attached to that, we flowed that down to the next level. So the, the, in this particular organization um, to mid-management and said, okay, and, and they, um, were this particular company works in value streams. So we went to each of the value stream managers and said, all right, here's what we've decided we need to accomplish this year as an organization. How can your area, how can your value stream help us do that? And we, we played catch ball with them until we came to an agreement on uh, what what they could do to help us. So once those commitments were made, the various levels of the organizations, various, various val value streams, etc., all the way down through the organizations, all of them really had predefined challenges that they could plug into their kata. One of the um, one of the things that's been difficult in in my experience in some of the implementations we've done with Kata is people don't quite understand how do I find a challenge and, and we tell them you can find it through value stream mapping you can find it in all sorts of different di different places the key for me was tying it in to the alignment with those organizational goals so that we're not you know playing the whack-a-mole game out there and and getting good results getting some improvements but not really helping to achieve achieve the goals that we really set out to do as an organization um, without alone alignment the folks were all over the board with their improvements like I said they were doing good stuff but it really wasn't making a, an overall difference to our bottom line um, what we did then was we worked on using those um, the job instruction program of TWI and we used it to teach the improvement and coaching katas to the management and the learners and the, the coaches. We created um, JI, uh, JI program um, uh, worksheets. So we used the JI program, um, um, what else, uh, uh, improvement. Um, you know, just by doing that one thing, improvement really became part of the culture through the use of those two things connected, um, or I should say those three things because we, you know, at that point we had already um, brought in a JI program. Um, one employee, I remember commenting, um, <laughs> he felt like he came to work every day like he was playing a game. Um, a really cool game of basketball is what he, he had mentioned. Um, and he said it was really fun to come in and have goals that he knew he had to reach and, and also be able to come in and kind of watch the score of the game as he played it. Um, kind of, there's a, out here in Utah, I know there's books about it, but um, it, it kind of reminded me of uh, the game of work. And, and if you haven't read it, it's, it's just basically about making 
uh, what we do at work uh, in achieving those goals kind of a game for people because people like to play games. Um, and, and he really enjoyed, as we connected, that being able to see the results of what he was doing. Um, so while I did not have a whole lot of time today uh, to go into a lot of detail, I hope I've accomplished what was my goal of bringing some sort of awareness uh, to the synergies between these three elements of, of a successful management system. You know, with each of them, really cool things can happen. I, I've used all three of them separately for years. Um, with all three, and we'll add standard work for leaders in there too since I love it so much. Um, not only can really cool things but happen, but really amazing things can happen. Uh, you, you really get the engagement, the culture change that I think is, is one of the really big missing pieces in the implementations of lean and improvement processes um, for a lot of years. So with that, I, um, I think I'm at the end of my time. I really appreciate you all hanging in there. I hope I've done justice to giving a little bit of insight into uh, the three synergies here. And um, you are welcome to contact me at any time if you have any questions, comments, um, more information on how we did that. Jacqueline? All right. Well, Chris, thank you so much for facilitating our session today. And we did get a couple questions in. I think we've got a couple minutes. We could probably knock some of those out. All right. Um, the first one, someone just wanted to know what the uh, Toyota Kata website was again. We got that a little bit earlier on in the presentation. You know what? It, um, the best thing to do to find that, because it's kind of a funky, it's like personal, you mish, flash, Da -da 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 -da. Go to Google or whatever your favorite search engine is and just type in Toyota Kata website and you are going to see um, on, on all of the ones that I looked at right after the, the results or, that came up that were paid advertisements, you'll see uh, the very first one is, the, is his website and it, like I said, it starts with something like um, personal slash you miss, um, I don't think I can pull it. Maybe yeah, I, pull it. I think someone actually just sent it in. It's um, www.personal.umich.edu backslash M. Rother. I'm guessing that's for Mike Rother. Backslash uh -huh. homepage.html. Very good. So thank you. Uh, shout out to Mark Messenger for sending that in to us. <laughs> Yes, and, and folks, if you haven't been out there and you don't have the information, I have to give like kudos to Mike because he is probably the only author out there who has written a book, and I might be wrong, but he, he just gives you everything. He has manuals, he has templates, he has everything you could ever want or need to implement Kata. Um, that's how I learned. Um, about all of this stuff. That's where I started. That's where most of my colleagues that teach Kata and implement Kata started. He's constantly updating it. You're missing out if you don't go over there and read the book. For sure. All right. Um, another question we got in was, did you leverage SWOT and pest analysis as part of your early Hoshin planning in your implementation? And if yes, how did they work with the team? Um, okay, so yes, um, and I didn't hear, it's the SWAT, I heard SWAT, what was the other one? Um, PEST, P-E-S-T. I'm not familiar with PEST. I'm sure it's probably similar to something else we use. So um, part of the detail that I couldn't go into, um, yes, I actually use a five-step process when I implement Hoshin Connery, and the very first step is doing a SWOT analysis, um, an environmental scan, that type of a... Um, activity in order to understand what's going on in our marketplace so that we know where we want to go because oftentimes we set goals and we have no idea what we're doing so the answer is definitely yes um, how did I, what was the last part of that question um, so if you did how did they work with the team um, so I'm not I'm not quite understand how did they work with the team? Those those tools work with the team or thinking, us? Yeah, how, how the analysis worked as part of um, your implementation with your Hoshin planning. You know, um, 
if I'm understanding the, the question correctly, um, those tools are really, um, they're fundamental um, in deciding direction for any organization and um, whether you're working in the marketing world or not. Um, I know in my MBA I, I think I probably spent two different classes um, learning about those kind of tools and it's for a good reason. Um, again if you if you don't understand where you're at, if you don't understand your environment, you don't understand what's happening external and internal to your organization, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, if you don't get that then the, the activity of setting goals and strategies and vision and mission is probably not going to be right. You need to understand those things. And so um, for this particular company, um, I actually got a lot of, uh, uh, um, what's the word I want to look for? They were not real thrilled to go through the steps of doing it when we first started. They were like, ah, oh, you know, we know, we already know. We don't need to do all this stuff. Uh, when we got done, there was a, a lot of big aha moments for a lot of the upper management because they they didn't know. They had no idea until they went out and did it. And, and it was the perfect, the perfect um, foundation for defining what the goals and the objectives are and cascading those through catch ball down because we were able to help people understand the why behind what we were doing and, and that's a whole nother story but helping people understand why is critical to getting buy-in. I hope that answers the question. Please reach out to me if it didn't. <laughs> Alright, and just got some feedback that PEST stands for Political, Economic, Social and Technology. Okay. All right. So I learned something there. <laughs> and there are a lot of different models like that that kind of tell us the same thing. Um, and that's kind of the environmental scan that I was referring to with the SWOT analysis. Great. Thank you. I learned something new too. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're about out of time. So um, it sounds like if anyone else has questions, though, your contact information's there, and they can reach out to you directly. Is that correct, Chris? Absolutely. All right. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you, Chris, so much for facilitating our session today. Um, so for some of the topics that were discussed, two of them were CADA and TWI. So for those of you listening, there's actually a CADA summit and a TWI summit that will be held in conjunction together next month in San Diego. So if you're interested in learning more about either of these summits, you can visit www.cadasummit.com or TWISummit.com and you can learn more and register there for the summit. So to wrap up, I wanted to remind everyone that today's webinar is being recorded and to answer one of the questions that came in, we will work on getting those slides provided to you. Um, so feel free to share the recording throughout your organization. So thank you, Chris, and thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye. Hey, Jacqueline, before yeah. we run, let me just throw something in there. I apologize. Um, the, I, I will put these slides up on the um, ASQ Lean Enterprise Division website. It's um, uh, led.asq.org. Um, those will be up there as well as I'm going to have you send me a re uh, the recording and, and we'll put that up there as well. Um, if anybody's looking for other information, the Lean Enterprise Division of ASQ does free webinars every every month. Um, we also have one on, um, uh, I think ours is on Kata on the 25th of this month. So if you are an ASQ member or a, specifically a Lean Enterprise Division member, you should have gotten some information about that. If not, go to our website and there's information. Again, they're free. Um, if you can't make it in person, we put them out on YouTube. Just search for our ASQ LED channel, and they're out there as well as you know some of the TWI ones we've done in the past. So lots of information out there. If you're not a member, there's lots of benefits to uh, joining us. So I hope to see all of you um, or hear from all of you at some time in the future. Thanks again. All right. Thank you again, and thanks to everyone for listening today. Bye.